Well, this is Barbara Magnolfi of Suspiria, and you're listening to Without Your Head. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by legendary composer and musician and member of Goblin, Maurizio Gorani. How are you doing tonight? Great, Neil. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. How's everybody? Good. Yeah, I understand yeah, yeah, it's excellent. It's great, great to have you. Here. Very excited. Uh, I'm happy you're doing this. So, uh, I understand that you're uh, you're doing a tour for uh, a live score for Dante's Inferno. Yeah, it's uh, you're putting together the tour. There are already a few dates uh, uh, because this, 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 I started this project last year, and since it was very successful, in the few shows that I did, I decided to do a tour with it. Well, when did the idea come about? Was it your idea or did someone uh, come to you? No, actually, um, the director of the Italian Institute of Culture last year um, had this idea because the um, uh, um, Italian consulate did something uh, regarding Dante Inferno, like a literature thing. And then uh, the director of uh, IAC in Toronto said, Why don't you try to do a, a live soundtrack of this movie? It's great. And I saw mm-hmm. that the movie is actually great, incredible. It's more than 100 years old, but mm-hmm. I took the, the chance to do it, and I did it. Yeah. Had, had you seen the movie before, or was that your first time seeing it? Oh, no, the first time. And uh, I was surprised. that the, I discovered a lot of stuff about that movie. That was the first feature-length movie made in it. Italy, ever so, uh, not horror, mm-hmm. but in general, and uh, there was no sound in the movies at that time yet. So, not mm-hmm. in the so it's 1911, it's a long time. Mm-hmm. So, when when you sit to write a score, does it what's that process like? Does uh, does music come to your mind, or uh, what you know, how, how does that uh, come to be? Yeah, let's say that uh, every time is a bit different, depending on the movie, depending on the situation. In this case, uh, I saw the movie uh, several times before trying to get uh, an idea. And uh, uh, since uh, it's everything is open, right? There's no guidelines, so you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I, I saw that there were some other people did some, even not totally all the movies, parts of the movie, the soundtracks, but they were always like, uh, I don't know, sort of not uh, harmonic or maybe more noisy, more avant-garde stuff. I decided to go mm-hmm. on the classical side, <laughs> so on the other side. Mm-hmm. So I make it very, very classical. So uh, adventures and uh, a bit of electronic. So, so you have to, to decide what the imagine inspired you, right? Uh, every time. Mm-hmm. And it's so far away. I think I did uh, uh, a good job in terms of if the director was uh, still alive, I he would like this, this approach to the yeah. soundtrack. Uh-huh. Yeah. You said there were no guidelines. Do you prefer to work that way, or do you prefer um, if someone is more hands-on and has like an idea of where they want you to go? Well, of course, this is a nice question. Uh, let's say that both uh, ways have uh, pros and cons. No guidelines means uh, total freedom, but total freedom means mm-hmm. too many mm-hmm. choices, and maybe th- it's more difficult to, to get a, a direction. If you have some a guideline, uh, of course, you, you have mm, you, that narrow your, your choices, and maybe you, it's easier that you find a way. Uh, let's say, yeah, in, mm-hmm. a little bit in between. Uh, no guideline means uh, external guideline, but of course the, the guideline is um, yeah, you have the, the, the movie, you have to get inspired, so just you leave something mm-hmm. to your instinct and maybe something comes out for sure. Mm-hmm. So how how long is a pro- how long did it did it take you to uh, come up with the with the total score for the movie? Oh, let's say I work ten days, or maybe a week, ten days, just to to decide the, the structure of the things and then to compose the basic themes. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, it was a quick process, even because uh, I didn't have much time. It's, it's not like a soundtrack uh, that you can spend months <laughs> or things. So <laughs> yeah. I, I did uh, something, and uh, but I left something to a little bit of improvisation, but uh, it's not. So there's uh, every scene as a theme. But that mm-hmm. part longer, like uh, um, maybe the, the one very dynamic uh, I left uh, myself to a little bit of space for improvising in some some part as well. So every every time is a bit some parts are a bit different. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple years ago, I w- I went to see Phantom of the Opera a couple years ago with a live orchestra, and it was a really powerful experience to have the music right there. You know, while you're watching the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a different. Uh, we are not used to do that, but uh, I think that the very first. The history of movies was like that. There was the, the silent movie and the musician, maybe with a piano, or maybe, you know, there's rolling piano, or maybe two or three musicians playing live every time. So there is more participation, something live that makes the things a little bit more interesting for the audience, right? Mm hmm. Nope. Uh, were, you always, uh, were you always into movies? Were you always a movie fan? Uh, I mean, uh, like uh, watching the movies. Yeah, I always like watching yeah. movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> what inspired you to uh, to get into music? Uh, normally, what inspired me is uh, okay. Uh, it, it's a lot of things altogether. Some uh, mm, when I was young, like a teenager, uh, I was. Uh, Maybe attracted by the, I don't know some movie, especially horror movies with this this dissonant strings and stuff. And since I was start, starting playing right rock with friends, and I said I start trying to do something different from what was normally doing chords and uh, or play songs with, with the other thing. So I, it, it was fascinating. Knowing that uh, with a keyboard or with an instrument, you can do something different uh, than just playing in a like a band or rock or whatever we were doing when we were fourteen years old, right? So mm-hmm. I was totally uh, started listening soundtracks without any um, official way to study, but just listening, trying, trying to understand mm-hmm. what was going on there. So it always been something like uh, really interesting for me. Mm-hmm. So, um, how did you uh, how did you get involved in Goblin? Uh, through common friends. Uh, that was 1975, just a few years ago, mm-hmm. <laughs> 43 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was playing with the bands, you know, the jam session and stuff, and there was a guitar player uh, that the new Massimo Morante from Goblin. And um, basically, he asked him if he knew a keyboard player. He, he knew him. He knew me. And the story was like uh, they. Uh, I didn't uh, participate in the recording of the very first uh, Profondo Rosso that they played. But uh, mm-hmm. just after the, the movie, they needed to put together a band, and the keyboard player originally from Goblin it wasn't available, so they they contacted me. Actually, we did the first lineup to play live. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, was contacted by the the guitar player Massimo Morante. Uh, we played a little bit together, and uh, we liked each other. And I said, "Yeah, let's let's start." <laughs> and I <laughs> I started playing with them. Mm-hmm. Did you you were with them uh, for when we did the score for Suspiria? Yes, but uh, something happened during the recording, like fighting mm-hmm. things. Oh, and basically, I, I left. I left the the, the band in uh, these days in uh, November 1976. And uh, unfortunately, after this argument, I'm not even listed in the in the movie. Yeah, I mean, in the title, mm-hmm. in the credits. But I am mm-hmm. definitely in uh, most of the. Uh, more than half of the teams that uh, are in Suspiria. Mm-hmm. Suspiria, we did uh, first, not uh, it's happening normally in 
the soundtracks, uh, we did the soundtrack, I mean, the main team before seeing any footage. So we, we saw really? Dario Argento. Really? Yeah, we, we met Dario. And so we, we came up with a team before seeing any <laughs> any footage. And uh, this is not, not what normally happens, of course, during soundtrack. Yeah. You see the movie first. Mm-hmm. And, uh, did, did he so explain we, we, any? Uh, go on, sir. Oh, yeah, of course. They, 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 they explained because we, we knew that there was this uh, mm-hmm. uh, Greek witch and stuff. So that, that's why we, have, uh, we put some element like uh, the, the bouzouki, the, the, the Greece and stuff. Yeah, of course, we mm-hmm. knew what it was about. Yeah. Yeah. I must. He, he must have really uh, been detailed to uh, to explain the to be able to do a score without seeing it. I think. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the, there is a um, a collaboration. Maybe you get inspired by the film, but uh, the director may even get inspired by the music. Like the music is uh, mm-hmm. everything. Like it's color, it's imagination, and things. So maybe. This, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Inspiration, yeah. yeah, I didn't think of it, but that's very interesting. Well, what are you himself like? Sorry? Uh, what was Dario Argento to himself, the person? Oh, uh, to me, because I, I, of course this is a, just a, a, as a personal impression, to me it's, it's very open, it's, it's very emotional. And I have a very good mm-hmm. relationship with Dario, so we are friends and sharing the same mm-hmm. culture, the same city. So, you know, when you speak the same dialect, this Roman, you you can achieve a, a level of uh, confidence very high, right? So, mm-hmm. I, he's, he's a nice guy, so I'm good for me. So I, I cannot speak for <laughs> others, but uh, yeah, the sure. very positive uh, sure. collaboration always, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think of the movie after God, after you saw the finished movie? The, the Suspiria. Oh, yeah, that's incredible! Yeah, it's incredible. It's uh, one of the best experiences I had seeing the movie after after that, and uh, the colors, uh, the the rhythm, everything, the mystery, the, the atmosphere, everything was. Good and put together with the, the music was good too. I don't know if you saw the the, the restoration for K that came out last year. It's, it's yeah, but, I actually yeah. saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I got to see it at the theater. It was uh, it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely the good mm-hmm. work. Of course, uh, now we are forty forty one year away. So <laughs> there is some. Uh, uh, stereotypes that uh, over time change, right? Maybe some part is definitely a bit slow, but that's because uh, mm-hmm. there was different uh, different rhythm, right? Now we are used to, to see quicker stuff happening all together. That time there was more time to uh, yeah think and <laughs> to go. Everything everything was slower. Mm-hmm. Uh, I- I'm fine with I, that's why because the movie's really about the atmosphere about of the film and the colors and the feel music as opposed to really like the uh, the plot of the movie. Of course, absolutely yes, and uh, it is, this is a very important part of the movie. Like uh, uh, even music at that time was a little bit uh, not slow, uh, but with rich of details. We were just buying an album and sitting together on the sofa for at least three or four times just to, trying to capture the every single detail and now it, it, there are millions of songs every day so it's not mm-hmm. anymore this kind of attention by the public I don't know it was different different mm-hmm. approach music and movies and everything else too. any thoughts on the remake that's coming out I, yeah, I saw the, the trailer, the, the one online. I don't know any, anything more than that. I, I saw something to, okay, totally different. It's more, uh, mm-hmm. my opinion, more according to to what's uh, yeah the stereotypes now, the sounds and thing. I, it may be a very good movie, yeah, but I don't no idea. But I don't think it's sure. going to uh, approach in any way the what 
the meaning of the Suspiria, the original one. I mean. So uh, how, how did you and Fabio Free uh, uh, get to work together? Uh, I had Fabio on the show, and uh, he did a live, a live score for the Beyond here in Boston uh, last year. It was, a, it was a pretty awesome thing to see. Yeah. Uh, long story. I, we were often in the same studio, and um, mm-hmm. he, he wanted the sound of the uh, horror, especially for the horror movie with um, Fulci. And uh, yeah, oh, wow. I never had a long collaboration, years and years with Fabio. We did uh, four or five uh, horror soundtracks together. I, I played even other mm-hmm. kinds of soundtracks, like comedies and stuff. So. And the uh, mm-hmm. very smooth, smooth way to, to work with Fabio, the very nice guy, and uh, we were collaborating. I don't know what to, to tell uh, that is not <laughs> good. So everything was totally good. We yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. I remember you don't, the. You don't have to say anything about him, that's good. <laughs> uh, actually, a um, couple of years ago, when he, he toured North America, they came to Toronto and I uh, joined them on stage. So we played together, the City of Living Dead, and, and, uh, and uh, I don't remember what else. But, I mean, a, a couple of sweet things. That was cool because the first time ever we played together live you know, on stage. It was very t- touching moment that time. Um, around a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he mentioned that um, he kind of like the. Uh, he mentioned uh, that Fabio wanted like a horror sound for, for those movies. What kind of uh, you your classical for for your uh, for your score for uh, Dante's Inferno? But um, are there any things, specific things that you put in there to give a horror feel? Or do you let the, uh, or, or no horror in the music itself? Um, this is a um, re- really a interesting topic to talk, talk about. I think that horror music doesn't exist. I mean, by itself, unless you don't get really specific uh, uh, stereotypes uh, like, yeah, this um, violence that was going on in the middle of 1950 or so. Uh, I think that the horror comes from the union of the images and the music. So, uh, horror may be the, the Joe, the Van, Van, or uh, Herman with Hitchcock, maybe Suspiria, there is simply a sort of a lullaby. There's an arpeggio, there's nothing horror. In some horror movies that uh, uh, are sometimes terrifying, but the music itself is not terrifying. So, uh, after this long <laughs> parenthesis, I don't think this is mm-hmm. horror m- music. Uh, mm-hmm. Horror is in, inside ourselves when we we get scared, and whatever we are listening at that moment, uh, that for us becomes horror music, but maybe anything. You know, not piano or a, mm-hmm. I don't know, music box, musical box, maybe a, ho- a really horror. Just a mm-hmm. being, I don't know. <laughs> so, is it just you that, uh, or do you have a, do you have an orchestra with you? How many people are involved in the in the live score for Dante's Inferno? Oh, just me, use keyboards. Okay, just me, me mm-hmm. use keyboards, and uh, I don't use computer, so. It's just me, because I'm playing for more than one hour just myself. Following mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah. Uh, how, do you play any other instruments? I know your specialty is a keyboard, but do you play other instruments? Yeah, I like making noise with anything I can make in, in, my, in my way. Uh, I start actually when um, with guitar when I was like teenager, like. Then, uh, yeah, keyboards. I play drums. My second instrument after keyboard is actually bass. I love to play bass. Mm-hmm. And I play guitar, and uh, I have a soprano sax. I play sax too. Mm-hmm. But no, I'm not a good musician in all this. And I think uh, I'm a good, good bass, bass player. <laughs> For the rest, yeah. I, I like making noise, yeah. <laughs> 
So how, how would you explain your uh, your solo music? Uh, is it similar to, to what people have heard um, with Goblin and your other, other uh, music, or is it something completely different? Uh, not completely. I think in, in a band there is always the elements that every musician put in, in the band. That's why the, the sound of the band is a, is a mix mm-hmm. of the, the, the ideas. Actually, I was in front of this problem when I did my solo album in 2013 because I was searching for my identity because actually I don't know my identity. And Mm -hmm. I tried to not stick to any thing that people were, or Goblin or or anything else. I just tried tried to be myself. So Mm -hmm. if I had to define my music, I have no idea. So other people (laughs) might... What I'm searching, yeah, what I'm searching uh-huh. yes, what I'm searching for is just uh, something that I like after I did it. And this is very difficult. Sometimes you do things the day after you listen and say, "No, what the heck is this?" And uh, but when you have, you do something that you listen and you like, uh, uh, that that's the new thing. There's no boundaries. I don't think it doesn't have to be. Uh, labeled to any genre, maybe anything, not labeled with any kind of instruments, maybe anything. I think it's pretty open. If something works, it's good music, no matter what uh, what's about or the genre, let's say. So how how, how would you compare Dario Argento and, and Fulci, like uh, uh, working with, with one or the other? How were they different? Okay, with Fulci, I never had a direct uh, um, relation. He, he was in the studio okay. sometimes, when, but that was music with Fabio. Uh, hard to to say. And, uh, nobody ever did this question to me, so I didn't <laughs> think about uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know much. I didn't know much uh, Lucio Fulci to to make a comparison in this way, so I, I don't know. Mm. Maybe uh, mm. I mean, no answer. <laughs> no, no, that's totally fine. Uh, what did you think about his films that, that you worked on once you saw the movies? Or oh, Fulci? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was um, totally same. The the horror of the seventies is a great, great, great stuff. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah, we, well, we see, um, when we remember stuff, uh, things, and uh, we remember in uh, with a sort of distortion of what we have in mind because it's, it's in our memory, right? We, we change over time, and uh, mm-hmm. even our what we see and what we remember is changing. So, but if I had to to trust my memory, it was really good. Even at that time when mm-hmm. I was seeing it, yeah. and I remember uh, that the, uh, there was a different way to record, right? Not the different was no computer, no tools. Right. Right. You, you had to follow. Sometimes, the very first time, there were reels projected in loop, and mm-hmm. you you were just playing music, uh, trying to to get in time with the things. It wasn't working. It was a different process, and. Uh, that gives you a little bit of horror when you see it ten times the same <laughs> reel with a big mm-hmm. uh, big screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of movies do you watch? Uh, you know, when you're not uh, scoring a horror movie, what kind of movies do you just enjoy to watch? Oh, normally science fiction is what I like. Mm-hmm. My top movie may be I don't know 2001: Space Odyssey or Mm. Or that runner, or these kinds of I like these kind of movies. Yeah, but yeah. but uh, it's not it's not uh, doesn't have to be science fiction to be a good movie for me. I I I see several aspects. And, uh, I like seeing movies, but I'm not. I don't stick to horror. Actually, I wasn't mm-hmm. watching horror before entering with Goblin. So just maybe oh, okay. random, random me sometimes, but not uh, specifically that. So anything yeah mm-hmm. i just saw 2001 uh they played it here in boston for the 50th anniversary uh they played it in the original 70 millimeter 
on the big mm-hmm. screen. It was uh, it was great to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, once you started to get, yeah, 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 it's uh, I think it's sixty eight because it's fiftieth anniversary. But yeah, right around okay. there. Okay. It was a yeah. It was cool though because uh, there was a person sitting next to me who watched it in that theater fifty years ago when it was released. So then he, he was there again while watching it 50 years later. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that much so, old. Uh, once you, yeah. Mm-hmm. Once, you, uh, once you started to work in, in the horror, uh, did you learn to, to like those movies more? The horror? Uh, yeah. Uh, not really, because when you start working on uh, something and... Uh, mm-hmm. You do the tricks. I'm not not tricks. I mean, you, you start studying this the scene in, in a um, technical mm-hmm. perspective, professional perspective, and uh, mm-hmm. you are not involved. Like you don't know anything. Like uh, you, you know the trick of the magician. Uh, right. You don't like the, the magician, the magic anymore if you know the trick behind. So you, you have to force mm-hmm. yourself to to. To jump in, in the in the audience, in the mind of the audience, pretending to not know what what's behind, because of course you, you see on a technical technical perspective, right? And uh, mm-hmm. so I didn't start. I didn't like um, horror more when I started working on it. I was liking horror more before because I didn't know what was mm-hmm. behind that in terms of music and even in mm-hmm. terms of uh, filming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, have you found uh, when you're touring with Goblin or you're touring uh, with your uh, doing the score that different uh, countries uh, react differently to the to the different music? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. I I have to say, U.S. is very warm. Most most of the U.S. is very welcoming and very warm. There's a lot of energy in. Uh, when we tour US, now we did four tours in US. That's not bad for a band mm-hmm. of old guys going around after so many years. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, yeah, definitely uh, US. Uh, I, I noticed this uh, this uh, warm audience in um, Japan. I noticed the very uh, precise. Uh, they they listen to anything, any single detail of what really uh, great listeners during the concert while maybe in the US it's more like uh, how, do you, how do you say sorry my second language English actually third language sometimes words don't come anyway less um, uh, very emotional let's say right so mm-hmm. very energe- energetic and it depends. Mm-hmm. And then I, I cannot say maybe there's a city there that's better, a city is different. In Italy itself, if you go south, it's more warm. If you go north, it's less, more cold people. And mm-hmm. wherever you go, I was expecting um, Scandinavia cold, <laughs> apart from temperature. Actually, they're very warm, in, in, even in Finland. So, it, mm, and then you have to take in account that we, we do a kind of music that is not really disco music or, or rock. So you, you have to find our audience specifically for listening to our stuff. So it's mm-hmm. really interesting to see the interaction with the people. It's always great because it's an exchange of energy. You know? We play differently mm-hmm. if the people is warm, of course, right? Because they transmit the, mm-hmm. the power that we need. Mm-hmm. Do you have a do you have a do you have favorite countries to to perform in, or is it you know just different? Uh, I'm thinking. Preferred mm-hmm. country, uh, maybe U.S. Maybe U.S. Uh, because it was where we, we played mostly uh, Europe and U.S. Uh, even though, we, we, as a I have to tell you, as a, a, a foreign bands, we have a lot of problems with visas and things. Right? We had these mm-hmm. <laughs> things, but uh, in terms of audience, yeah, I love, I love, I love the US. I think uh, the rest of the as well. We all like playing. Yeah. yeah. I will play with, with my Dante's Inferno for now. 
now I'm pretty sure in October we will be in Colorado. In uh, mm-hmm. and that will be October the 20th. I don't know the city yet, the theater. I will play in uh, another things in, uh, in Saskatoon, but that's Canada. And uh, yeah, yeah, the action sure. didn't, didn't give me yet the, the schedule of the dates. I don't know, but I think uh, they will be closing uh, soon uh, several dates and uh, starting in September, September, October, November, and all the fall. Very cool. Well, yeah, they'll be up on the in your website, and uh, I'll inform people when uh, start to fill up. Hopefully, yeah. you'll be in Boston. Come and see you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I hope to come to Boston. I've been three times in Goblin. Um, well, my website is very simple. It's my first and last name, mauriciowedding.com. Yeah. And I just set up uh, Inferno page. So I will mm-hmm. post there. And I, of course, on Facebook, uh, um, I'll post uh, as soon as the, I get filled the, the schedule, the dates. I will keep it updated for sure. Very good. Very good. Good. Uh, when you're in the United States, the, the, besides uh, performing, uh, do you do you ever go around and see the different uh, s- the sites or anything? Like that? Uh, sites. I mean, the cities and uh, we, yeah, anything we have, in the local. Area. I love to, and when I can, I love going around, meet people, and see these sites. The problem is that when we tour with Goblin, sometimes. It, it's day by day, so we have to do it with a tour bus. Mm-hmm. That means uh, you see just the, the dressing room, the the, the the venue, you play, maybe you go around the block, <laughs> and the day after you stay mm-hmm. in another city. But we, if we have one day off or two days off, or maybe it's close city by city, uh, yeah, we have mm-hmm. always, uh, I like, I love to see things i i, I yeah. like i like yeah. um, those states i know not the big cities i know all of them i've been millions of times in new york and la yeah but i like i like mm-hmm. uh, you said earlier that in the, the 75 or, I, I forget it was uh, the 70s we left goblin was over you know disagreement uh, uh i assume everything's been uh, has been fine since then oh it's been a while ago but uh, I, I think I, I, I lost the last part of your question. It's, uh, after the, the fight, uh, I mean, seventy six. Yeah, and then uh, when you came back, is uh, has been a good. Uh, there's uh, has a pretty good relationship ever since then. Oh yeah, we were back and forth. We, we are a litigious band, like most of the bands. It, uh, so uh, it, it, we are no exception. Uh, my history with Goblin was okay. 75 to end of 76. Then I joined again in 78. We did other mm-hmm. soundtracks like uh, Contamination, Patrick, uh, and uh, Buyo Mecca, that's Beyond the Darkness, uh, and other stuff until I mean, 82 or 83. Then, sort mm-hmm. of the Goblin history, we went dormant like a band. They did another couple of things. And uh, we rejoined in 2004 when I was uh, already here in Canada because I moved from Italy to Canada. And the relationship, yeah, was good. It was good. We established again mm-hmm. the relationship. We did a new album. We started again playing live. Actually, I think I, I was the one that insisting to play live again uh, mm-hmm. because we were not sure. I think uh, um, all the um, social media helped bands like us and like other hundreds of bands to mm-hmm. get um, add people to know them because uh, we were all for, for, forgotten in the uh, mm-hmm. end of the 90s. Nobody knew anything about progressive rock, horror movies and things. And then when internet started, people started getting interested on in, in watching what's going on 20, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Then everything mm-hmm. take, took off again. So I think thanks to internet, mm-hmm. the, the con, yeah, it's communication, that, that all these things are coming back and people can enjoy this kind of stuff. Yeah. So... Would you say it's a big age range? Because I think it would be a lot of people who uh, listened, you know, at the time in the seventies and grew up with it, 
And then it's like it's a lot of new people who who found it, uh, you know, uh, on the internet and found you know started watching these movies uh, from before. It seems like there's like a age a big age range of people people who who with music. Oh yeah, our public is a range for twenty year old to seventy, maybe even more. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, kids now they, they they have the possibility to see what's going on, where what's going on uh, in the seventies, right? Thirty mm-hmm. years before they were born, and uh, we're we're glad we are glad to be part of this uh, history. These things are sometimes we don't even believe uh, as many people know us and uh, on our songs. You see that they're singing our. Uh, songs that were not sang, not lyrics, but they just they know everything, including kids. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's a, that's a great, great, I mean, mm-hmm. that feeling. Mm-hmm. So what was that like when you uh, performed live with them again in two thousand four? After you know so much time apart. Mm, at the beginning, you know, maybe not seeing each other for more than twenty years, not playing together for thirty five years and more. Yeah. He said, what, what do you do? We, we, we look at in your eyes. So, no, I have an instrument. You have an instrument. <laughs> we have to create something <laughs> together. So, uh, w- when you start mm, going over this first moment, the approach, you find the same souls, the same spirit that was like uh, uh, 30 years before. Because I think there's no age of music. Like a musician doesn't have age in, in mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We we age like physically, but uh, uh, the mind are the same. So that it is the same relationship and the same uh, thing happening. Uh, like one day before we we played, uh, thirty years just went like nothing. And uh, this mm-hmm. is good. Uh, all musicians, uh, there is no age barrier. There is no country barriers. It's music that uh, keep us together, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, was there any, uh, is there any specific music that you would say really, uh, I know I asked earlier about influences, but was there any specific music that really made you, uh, want to become a musician? Yes. I mean, not, not the yes, the band. Yes, there is, uh, whatever <laughs> is. Okay. At the beginning, it was like more rock. The very first band mm-hmm. I, I had, like Deep Purple. But they had to include an organ, I mean, uh, some keyboards. And then uh, uh, the first one that gave me a hit was uh, Keith Emerson, with uh, um, Emerson Lake and Palmer. And I saw this guy playing 5-4. Right? I said, what is this? It's not 4-4, four, four, it's like a uh, timing. And I started researching this kind of stuff that now they call progressive rock. So I um, fell in love with gentle giant. All these bands that were trying to go over the boundaries of what was normal, and uh, always interested in on, on discovering, researching mm-hmm. new new things, uh, not to go too far or too weird, but yeah, something that is now called progressive rock was very influencing me at the first period. Then uh, after some things, I started. I discovered mm, another thing is jazz rock, the English jazz rock, like a soft machine, this kind of band. We were talking about um, late 70s. And then I discovered, yeah, weather report and a uh, little bit of jazz, fusion. Uh, kind of so there is always um, bands or musicians that inspire you, right? And they change over mm-hmm. time. Yeah, that my, my that, mm-hmm. that was my my path from uh, rock to prog, prog rock to jazz rock to fusion and and sort of jazz. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what do you listen to today? I think I've lost most of your question. I uh, will listen to today. What what I listen today? Uh, yeah. Not much. I might be getting old, so I don't have. Uh, uh, I'm not researching much to listen. Uh-huh. I happen to stay in place where where I listen some good music. 
I'm not following any more uh, artists like uh, I, I listen old stuff. Sometimes I listen classical music. Uh, I listen uh, live music, but maybe people playing live or jam sessions. Sometimes I do even play jam sessions. I'm not uh, really focused on anything. This is, this is a period for sure. And in this period, I want to concentrate to, on myself and trying to be as mm-hmm. far uh, as I can from uh, influence, external influence right now. I need to, mm-hmm. to understand what's, what's around me. Uh, so that, that's the question. I just listen randomly, whatever it is. <laughs> very good very, very good uh you can get your own music on your website and you can also uh check out where dante's inferno will be and uh i'm really looking forward to that uh, i think that'll be a cool experience and uh i want to thank you for coming on the show tonight oh thank you thank you for having me and uh i'm pretty sure we'll see each other soon with inferno somewhere close very good i hope so Hopefully, yeah. I'll definitely be there. It was good. I'm sorry for any technical problems here. No, it's not the best connection, but uh, it was a pleasure to have you. Okay, no problem. At the end, we made it. Yes, we are. Very good. Thank you and have a good night. And you too. Thanks. Bye. Hello, my friends. I am Fabio Frizzi, and we are listening to Without Your Head Radio.